Hi! Today we're going to learn about trigonometric substitution. Let's say we have to solve for the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So how do we do this? Well, here's where we use something called trigonometric substitution. So let's go back to the Pythagorean identity for trigonometric substitution. It said that sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to 1. Now let's think about something else. Let's think about the unit circle. On the unit circle, sine of theta is y, and cosine of theta is x. So now let's rewrite this in terms of y and x. Noticing that we can use y and sine, of, sine interchangeably, and x and cosine interchangeably, only in this example, this part of the example. So, let's rewrite this as y squared plus x squared is equal to 1. That means that y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. As we can see, 1 minus x squared is a quantity that we get in this, in this radical here. So 1 minus x squared, which is the radicand, is also this part of the Pythagorean identity. So, as you can see, on this side we've gotten y squared. So let's just isolate y. We know that y will have to be equal to sine of x. So because this makes, so because when you plug in sine of x or y, you get 1 minus x squared, we're going to set in this example, so now this is away from this part of the example, we're going to set x, this x, equal to sine of theta. Meaning that dx d theta is equal to cosine of theta. Meaning that dx is equal to cosine of theta d theta. <clears throat> so now what do we do? Well, now we have to plug in the values that we know. So, when we plug in the values, we get this is equal to the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So, 1 minus sine squared of theta. So, what is this equal to? Well, as we know, according to the Pythagorean identity, 1 minus sine squared of theta would mean that we have to subtract sine squared of theta from both sides, leaving the left side having x cosine squared of theta isolated. So that means that this radicand is equal to cosine squared of theta. And this is still in dx. So this is equal to 1 over cosine squared of theta dx. However, we can't even take the integral now. The reason being is this is dx instead of d theta, so this integral is in terms of x. So what do we do? Well, we have to convert it from dx to d theta. So we know that dx is equal to cosine theta times d theta. So we can say that this is equal to cosine theta d theta over the square root of cosine squared of theta. And we just multiplied whatever dx is by the 1 that was in the numerator. So now what is this equal to? Well, this is equal to the integral of cosine theta d theta over cosine theta. And these two cancel out leaving us with the integral of d theta, which as we know would be equal to theta plus c. Now here comes another fact. Remember how in the beginning we substituted x sine of theta in for x? Well, and by the way, up here it's supposed to be dx. Well, the question is asking, for the integral in terms of x. So we have to get, 
where we have to find out what theta is in terms of x. In this example, it's pretty simple, relatively simple. We know that x is equal to sine of theta. So that means that theta is equal to arc sine of x. So this is equal to arc sine of x plus c. So the answer to this problem is equal to arc sine of x plus c. And we know that this is correct because this is a common derivative and a common integral. And we know that this, the derivative of arc sine of x is this value here, and the integral of this is arc sine of x plus c. Those are common derivatives and integrals. Today we learned about trigonometric substitution and calculus. Thank you for watching this video.